before I had children, I used to have a recurring nightmare. And the nightmare went like this. I'd be watching TV. And the characters, the mother and the father, and their son. They had let their son <coughs> stay up late. Because it was his birthday. He was a good boy. Pleases and thank yous and yes, mum, no dad. Fabulous. The clock struck midnight. Hooray, it's my birthday, he shouted. But then everything changed. Outside there was a clap of thunder. Inside, the lights flickered. And before the mum could wish her son a happy birthday, this horrible sound came. What? You call this a present? This is terrible! I have never had a present like this. I'm not a baby anymore. I hate you. <laughs> Mum turned to his father and said, <clears throat> Our angel has turned into a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. What to do? I have been concerned about this for years. What could I do? Because I didn't want to have a teenager from hell when my son got to that age. Because I remember what I was like as a teenager and I didn't want to repeat <coughs> the same story. And then it came to me. I already had the answer. And I had learned that answer when I used to be a school teacher many years ago. See, when I turned up at school, teaching teenagers. I did not know what I was letting myself in for. It was the toughest work I have ever done, bar none. And I struggled, and I struggled, until I met Miss Smith. Now, Miss Smith came up to about here on me, but she had a voice that could launch a thousand ships she could be heard across the playground. And that's how I have learned how to throw my voice on Miss Smith. Everyone loved Miss Smith. The teachers adored her. The pupils just absolutely loved her. Well, she noticed that there was something wrong. And she took me under her wing. And she said, Pedro, I have to teach you something. You have to learn about the process Bamboo and the art of raising teenagers. <laughs> Bamboo and the art of raising... I know, that's exactly how I felt. I had no idea what's bamboo got to do with raising teenagers. Well, I soon learned. And I started improving my classes. They got better. People liked coming to my classes. I enjoyed giving them. And it was great. And then one day, Miss Smith came up to me and she said, Soon you're going to have a son. <laughs> How do you know? How do you know? And when you do, remember to apply the principles of bamboo and the art of raising teenagers. And that's exactly what I did. And that's <laughs> what I would like to share with you, a couple of those principles with you, because I believe you could benefit from this. Now, the first thing to know about bamboo, for those of you who are not experts on bamboo, I hope there's no experts in the room tonight, but if you are, <laughs> that bamboo has deep roots, which means <clears throat> it's solid. It's hard to uproot. When you deal with teenagers, they may be moody. They may not talk to you, or they might talk to you very loudly. <coughs> they may be stroppy, but the one thing learned about teenagers is they want consistency, they want stability, and they want to know that you are going to be that person for them. So I went up to my son James when he became a teenager and I said, James, you're going to be going through many changes. You're going to be growing emotionally, physically, and there will be times when you won't want to talk to me and I won't want to talk to you either. <laughs> but James, know this. I love you. I will always, always be 
be there for you, no matter what. There will be times when I annoy you by coming into your room and asking you, how's school going? And you'll say, school, school, nothing's new. Or when you would have problems and you don't know how to answer the questions, you don't know where to turn, I will be there for you. And if you don't want to ask me for help, I will help you to find someone to help you. Because I am here, I am rooted, I am bamboo. The second thing to know about bamboo is it's flexible and very strong. Teenagers are really crafty. They are always, always, always pushing the boundaries. Can I stay up a little bit later tonight? Can I go out with my mates? Oh, can I have this? Can I have that? Can I have a new car? No. <laughs> I have all of these things. So I learned to deal with my son on this one by not saying no straight away but to challenge him back, to test, to see how actually, did he actually want this or not. So for example, he wanted to join a cycling club. So I said, great, go do the research. No, he expected me to do it. I said, no, this is for you. So he eventually, reluctantly did, and came up with a list of clubs. So I said, fine, good. Now follow up. Call them, contact them, email them me to write the emails for him. No, you do it. And that way, I found out that he was really serious. And he found a great club. I took him there. He enjoyed it tremendously. My son's now 18. <coughs> first year at university. He's my best mate. We're still in contact on Skype. <coughs> Skype's fantastic. I've become his mentor and coach and he asked me advice of how to do things, but I approach him the same way, using bamboo, being solid for him, being flexible, challenging him. And this is what I would offer to you. Learn about bamboo and the arts of raising children. It may change your life, Madam Tessa.